Hello world, this is Random Fix, and in this video today we're going to be discussing the Acura drive cycle. So if you need to pass an emissions test on your Acura vehicle, you want to go ahead and watch this video in depth. And if you need additional help, please reference the tips to pass an emissions test. And on this playlist, you're going to be able to watch the whole drive cycle here from start to finish, or actually cover this drive cycle and what you need to do and to better understand how the inspection monitors work you want to check out this video right here which is going to be titled what to do to smog a vehicle and I'm going to cover this in depth with you guys So this is the OBD2 reader right here. And on your vehicle, it's just gonna connect right in. And it goes in one way only. And once you do that, you will go ahead and be able to scan it. And these are for under $20. When you plug it up, you should automatically get power to it. And you wanna make sure that the ignition's on with the motor off and the check engine light is on. For the Acura drive cycle, this is going to be for 1996 in Euro Acuras, and this is my nine step drive cycle. And there's some technical parameters that we need to pay attention to before we get started. And a couple of the technical parameters are you got to make sure your check engine light, which is a malfunction light lamp, must be off. Number two, you want to make sure that the vehicle sits in the cold overnight so it's a cold start you want to make sure that you have about three quarters of a tank of gas but no less than a quarter tank and park the vehicle at least for six hours on level ground and the temperature as far as outside should be about 40 to 95 degrees and you want to make sure that the keys are out of the ignition the doors are locked and the keys are far away from the vehicle because a lot of the newer vehicles actually sense the keys and this may keep the vehicle from going into a sleep mode and thus preventing the emissions drive cycle from being completed. And currently at the end of 2020 in California, which happens to be one of the stricter states in the country as far as emissions, here's the rules. And on any 1996 through 99 vehicle, you can have one monitor that shows incomplete. And 2000 and newer vehicles, only the EVAP could be incomplete. But this depends on the station that you go to because some stations will go ahead and check your vehicle. And if they see that EVAP is incomplete, they'll tell you to keep driving. But just know that's not the official rule. So you may have to go to a different station. On diesel powered vehicles, 98 through 2006, all the monitors basically need to be complete. Newer diesel vehicles from 2007 and newer, you can have up to two monitors that can be incomplete. And when you're doing this test, it's really nice to have a stopwatch and whenever possible drive on level rows as this will go a lot smoother and you will do less driving and get the drive cycle monitors ready. So before we jump into the actual drive cycle, while you're doing the test, please follow the local rules in your state and make sure you do this at a good time where there's not a lot of traffic. And as far as vocabulary, OBD2 is this term and the port that I showed you in the beginning of the video. And this port basically is really nice because before 1996, every vehicle manufacturer had its own port and it was really confusing. So this onboard diagnostics type two started in 96 and has really made things simpler when you're diagnosing a vehicle. If I use the word DTC, that stands for diagnostic trouble codes and there's pending codes and hard set codes. A pending code is one, where the computer knows there's an issue, but it needs more information before it actually triggers the check engine light to turn on versus a hard set code, which is a code 
or an issue the computer has verified and it knows that it's there. And if you're having an issue where the check engine light is turning on within milliseconds of the engine being started, that probably means you have some sort of hard set code or some sort of wiring issue, maybe a damaged wire to your oxygen sensor. So make sure that you fix all these issues before you start this drive cycle because no matter how well you do this, your drive cycle monitor will not get ready if there's pending or hard set codes. The MIL is a malfunction indicator light or lamp, aka the check engine light, the service engine light, service engine zoom light. And when you're using an OBD2 scanner, if you see the word OK, this means that it's complete, set, and ready. These all mean the same exact thing. When you see the letters I and C, this means incomplete, unset, and not ready. And NA means it's not applicable to your vehicle. So go ahead and skip that monitor. And I have five monitors here listed. The first one is going to be the oxygen sensor. And the first one here is going to be the oxygen sensor heater. And this is what helps the vehicle's oxygen sensor heat up faster so the vehicle can do a better job and pollute less as far as the emissions. We have the O2 sensor and this is the oxygen sensor and most vehicles at least have two. So on a four cylinder Acura, it's going to basically have a pre-cat or an upstream oxygen sensor. And then right after the catalyst or the catalytic converter, you're going to have a post cat or a downstream oxygen sensor. There's the EGR, which is the exhaust gas circulation. You have cat, cats. These basically refer to the catalyst, also known as the catalytic converter, which is the part in cat on the OBD2 scanner is basically the monitor. And you have the EVAP system, which is the evaporative emissions control system. And basically, in short, this keeps the gas fumes out of the atmosphere. And this is the order that the monitors actually get ready in. First monitor to normally get ready is the O2 heater, then the oxygen sensor itself, the EGR, the catalyst, and then the EVAP. So if you're running into a situation where your catalyst is not getting ready, and the oxygen sensor is not ready as well, focus on the oxygen sensor. So this is the actual drive cycle here. So this is a nine step procedure here for your Acura vehicle. So if you have a Honda, I'm gonna recommend that you actually check out the Honda video because it's slightly different. And you can find that video link in the video description box below. So the cold start is gonna begin with basically starting the vehicle and letting the vehicle idle for 20 seconds and you want to make sure you do not touch the gas pedal then you want to go ahead and jump to step two which is basically going to be rev up so keep the transmission in park or neutral if you have a manual transmission increase the engine speed to 2000 rpm and hold it until the engine temperature reaches about a quarter of the scale and this takes about three minutes normally and then what you're going to do is you're going to let the vehicle idle for an additional 20 seconds without touching the accelerator and let the vehicle idle for that 20 seconds and step four you're going to go ahead and begin driving increase your speeds to 50 to 60 miles an hour and you want to go ahead and do this for at least 20 minutes. And this step should be performed on the highway. And you should not use the AC or cruise control. And try to go ahead and use the highest gear. So if you have an automatic vehicle, you want to be in D4 or D5, depending on the vehicle. And if you have a manual transmission, you want to be in fifth or sixth gear. And step five. 90 seconds of steady speed. So drive an additional 90 seconds without moving the accelerator pedal at all. And the speed here should not vary more than three miles an hour. 
And if you're not able to actually achieve this 90 second duration here, you want to do this for at least 30 seconds. And then you want to go ahead and repeat it a total of three times. So the total is 90 seconds. So it's really helpful to find a nice straight open road where you can maintain the speed. Step seven is the slowdown. And what you want to do here is you want to get off the highway or the freeway without touching the brake and also removing your foot off the accelerator pedal. Do not shift and you want to get your speed down to at least under 20 miles an hour and once you're under 20 miles an hour go ahead and enter the freeway again get to the 60 miles an hour close to under 20 again accelerate to over 60 miles an hour close to under 20 and this really does help set a lot of those monitors and you want to make sure that you do this in a very safe fashion Step eight, you want to do some sort of city driving here. And when possible, allow the vehicle to coast for 10 seconds without depressing the accelerator or the brake pedal. And so you want to get yourself in a nice city driving mode about 30 to 40 miles an hour. And again, try not to touch the gas pedal or the brake once you reach 40 miles an hour, then you just let it coast. And you want to do this at least maybe three, four times before you go ahead and move on to step nine, which is basically you want to turn the vehicle off. And once the vehicle is off, you want to make sure that you leave it on that level surface where you parked for at least 30 minutes, lock the doors, take the key far away from the vehicle so it doesn't sense it. And now, you want to take out your scan tool and you want to scan the vehicle and you want to focus on any unset monitors. So if your EGR is not ready, you want to go back to the coasting stage where you come off the freeway and you let go of the gas pedal and you basically just let the vehicle drift down to under 20 miles an hour. So if you guys have any additional questions about this, the Honda video down below will really help you out. So congratulations, all your monitors on your vehicle are set. If your vehicle is 96 through 99, you're gonna to need to get the vehicle tested on a dyno at 15 and 25 miles an hour. The gas analyzer, they're gonna check your gas cap, they're gonna do a visual, and if your vehicle is 2000 and newer, they're gonna do the visual as well as performing the OBD2 test and making sure that all the monitors are ready except for that EVAP, depending on your state. And remember, all vehicles are subject to the visual inspection. So you wanna make sure there's no altered parts like cold air intake, spacers for the throttle, cracked vacuum hoses, missing catalytic converters, and they're also going to make sure that you don't have a bunch of smoke coming out the tailpipe of your vehicle. And a couple of last minute things I want to leave you off with. You want to make sure if you're selling a vehicle that you normally give the buyer the smog because this is the seller's responsibility. And most states don't have any way of waiving this requirement unless you're selling to a dismantler or a dealer. And if you're a buyer, Never buy a vehicle unless all the inspection monitors are ready because 99% of the times, if the monitors are not ready, it's because the dealer or the seller has reset the check engine light to cover up an existing issue versus 1% of the time, it's caused by a dead battery or a battery swap. And if you're having the situation where somebody tells you the battery is actually dead and that's the reason why the inspection monitors are not ready, you're still going to have to verify that because a dead battery or a weak battery is a, sometimes a symptom of other issues. There could be a short, you could have a bad alternator. And a lot of these vehicles are so heavily dependent on a battery. A bad battery can cause all kinds of issues from 
the inspection monitor is not getting ready to transmission is acting up because the computer can't detect what's going on if you guys found this video to be helpful please comment down below if you guys are new to the channel please consider subscribing by hitting that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner as well as clicking on that little bell so anytime i post a video that's aimed to save you time and money that you guys will get notified have a great day thanks again